Over the last two or three years, the AI and machine learning community have been building bigger and bigger models that are doing more and more impressive things. Nowhere is this more apparent than in natural language processing, where we've seen really impressive models like the GPT-3. Uh, you can refer back to my previous video to learn a little bit more about GPT-3. We saw a couple of the demos, the examples that the model was able to do, you know, build a website, uh, or learn how to build websites, I guess, based on, on, on a few examples, or learn how to retrieve information or data um, from just its, the data it was pre-trained. This is a quote that I uh, found interesting by David Chalmers, a scientist focused on philosophy of mind, saying that GPT-3 is instantly one of the most interesting and important AI systems ever produced. I agree with the sentiment. I find them fascinating. Now, the, the transformer was first proposed in this paper. Um, it's, it's one of the technologies that are underlying a lot of this rapid progress in natural language processing and in AI and machine learning as a whole. So this 2017 paper, I believe, uh, introduced the model, it came out of Google and um, University of Toronto researchers. A transformer basically is a type of machine learning model. It's a, an architecture of, of neural networks. Since then, variants of the transformer, namely a variant called BERT that builds on top of the transformer, has grown to dominate the uh, models of natural language processing in various tasks. These are some leaderboards that researchers use to rank and rate models, and the top scoring models from this snapshot are all based on BERT, which is based on the transformer. Google has, has rolled out uh, BERT and transformer-based uh, models to Google Search. They've been using them in, uh, to empower Google Search, and they call it one of the biggest leaps forward in the history of search. So this is important stuff. Now, over the last two weeks, um, we have developments that extend the value of transformers beyond just natural language processing. And so this is a, a conversation between two senior um, AI and ML researchers. Uh, Oriol is in uh, DeepMind and, and Ilya is the head scientist in, in OpenAI. And based on this paper on vision transformers that applied transformers to computer vision and um, Oriol thinks that it's, it's farewell to convolutions. And so deep learning in computer vision has been dominated by convolutional neural networks that have been doing, you know, producing the best deep learning models in computer vision. But right now, starting from you know, a few weeks ago, um, we're starting to see transformer-based models that are going to be, uh, that seem to be doing uh, results that are really impressive in computer vision. Uh, so transformers are getting more and more important. So not just in, in natural language processing, but now it's going to extend uh, its surface area, I guess, to, to other areas of, of deep learning beyond just, just language. Um, and so it's never too, too late to learn about them. They're, they're, they're fascinating. They're, they keep getting more and more important as, 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 a, as an architect. Now, I've written this blog post before uh, called the Illustrated Transformer, I think two years ago. Um, about a million page views, uh, I believe, of people who were able to learn about Transformers based on um, just some of the visualizations, some of the ideas that I, that's when I read the paper and went over the code, that's how I understood the Transformers and, and I illustrated it in this series and send. And so in this video, we'll describe the transformer again. And if you want any more details than the things that we'll be discussing here, you can revert back to uh, my blog. You can just search for the illustrated transformer uh, and you'll find a lot more details. So let's get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture of a trained model. We can think about a transformer as a black box, a blue box in this case, that takes a sequence, um, let's say three uh, word phrase in French and uh, outputs it as a, an English phrase. So I'll put I am a student if it's given that, that, that French sentence. And that's the example from the initial paper because the initial paper talked about uh, machine translation models. We broke down that uh, general black box into two smaller components, two smaller black boxes, let's say, inside of it. 
You know, one is an encoder stack, so the input goes to the encoder stack, and then uh, output some of its processing uh, results to a decoder stack, and the decoder stack outputs the um, output words or tokens. And then we mentioned that the stacks, each of them is composed uh, of layers, uh, six layers each in, in the initial transformer uh, of encoders and decoders. These grew to be called transformer blocks. The initial paper doesn't call them that, but later uh, uh, papers, I believe, start, start calling it that. So uh, transformer encoder blocks and transformer decoder blocks are, are the, 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 let's say, building blocks of, of transformers. Now, the initial transformer is a uh, encoder-decoder model. As, as we've seen. And that is still the case with models like um, BART. So there are still models, transformer-based models that are encoder and decoder, but they're not everything that's out there. What we're gonna be talking about in this video is transformer language models. And these are based on just the decoder stack and they're composed of uh, a series of, of decoders. Uh, examples of these are the GPT-3 and the GPT-2. But that's the only, not the only variant of the transformer that we have. We have transformers that are based on the encoder side of things. Uh, and BERT is the greatest example of, of things. So transformers, encoder, decoder, and then uh, the two components can each create interesting models, uh, types of models on their own. And I believe the language model is, is fascinating on its own because first it can generate language that's, that is uh, fascinating. And then if you understand the decoder, it's very easy to go in and learn about the encoder or the encoder-decoder model as well. And so our focus here is going to be the one in the middle, the decoder. And then these models are, are, are put in, in, in various uh, numbers of layers. And so uh, GPT-2 is 36 blocks, um, one on top of each other, while BERT is about 24 uh, blocks. A word about training before we get into how a, a actual trained model uh, works. And you can revert back to my GPT-3 video. We talked a little bit about this. And so a, a model starts as untrained and it goes through a, a pre-training process where we expose it to a lot of language. And from that emerges a, a trained language. And in this case, we, we have a lot of data that we train the model on. In, in, for language models, that data is text. We just get a lot of text from the internet, from Wikipedia, from various websites, and we create training examples from them. How do these training examples look? They look like this. And so let's say we have that text at, at the top. A second law of robotics. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings. We can slide a window on that and generate examples because we want to train the model to predict the next word. And so the first, let's say, example we say is that OK, we'll use the first four or five words, five tokens, and hold the sixth token as, um, as a label. Uh, and so that's one training example that we'll use to train the model uh, later. And we can do that multiple times with you know, longer uh, sequences of input. Um, and then we go across, across the data like this. Once we have our examples, we present them uh, in a fashion like this. So if we have this example of a robot must, and our label is obey, we want the model to predict that word, but we know it hasn't been trained yet, so it's not gonna be able to uh, predict the right word. So we, pre we present it with the three words only. We don't show it the word obey. So we say, okay, GPT-3 or you know, transformer language model, here are these three words. Uh, what do you think the word after them would be? And so the words go into the model, the model does uh, its calculation, and it outputs a, a word. And it will be junk in the, in the start because it's, it's based on, um, you know, it's randomly initialized, so it's going to be a randomly selected word. And so we said, hmm, we say, um, no, you said troll, it should have been obey. Um, we can calculate the error, the difference between these words. We have ways to um, put that into a numeric value. After we calculate that error, we have a way of feeding it back to the model, updating the model, so that the next time it sees a robot must, it's more likely to say obey. We do this thousands, millions, tens of millions of times on, on all the data that we have, and then we have a trained model 
Um, and that's the, the pre-training uh, phase of, of a language model. So let's talk about transformer language models. There are two major components of a transformer block. I'll, have, I'll present two examples, one to illustrate what one of the two major uh, components. So let's think of a transformer with only one, one block, one layer. If we present it with the, the two words, the Shawshank, okay? Um, this is based on the film, The Shawshank Redemption. And we, what we said, okay, predict the next word after these two. The model has looked through, let's say, Wikipedia, has been trained on, on a lot of text. And so will it be able to predict what word comes after Shawshank? We can actually try this. And one way to try it is to go to the Hugging Face website and try a small variant of, of the GPT. If we go there and we say, OK, the Shawshank, that's the, our input uh, phrase, uh, the model is able to generate a whole paragraph. But we are only interested really in, in the third word here. And it was able to actually uh, complete uh, the sentence and, and find the word redemption, which is what we were looking for. The main component here that was able to tell us that the word redemption really comes, usually comes after Shawshank is the second major component in, in the, the decoder block. That's called the feed forward neural network. It's also called um, the MLP, the multi-level perceptron in, in, in the GPT papers. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. So this is basically a, a large, massive neural network that is able to tell usually what words come after uh, the, the, the previous words. And so it, it, uh, from the training process, it is able to um, make these predictions about the next word, um, given the, the first word that, that we give into it. Now, this is not new. This is not uh, novel in the transformer. We've known and we've had neural-based uh, language models since about 2003. And before that, we used to have it as, as in, in tables that are called you know, n-gram tables. So we would just look up the probabilities of each word that comes after, um, after the word. So this idea is not specifically novel to, to the transformer. But the second component um, solves a much more complicated uh, feature of language or property of language. Let's say we say, we give this input sentence to the model. We say the chicken didn't cross the road because it. Now, if we only had the second component, the feed forward neural network that we talked about, um, and it would blindly maybe look at what words usually come after the word it. Uh, but then we need, a first, we need a component that comes before that to say, what does it refer to here? Because if we're really to be able to process the word it, we need to understand or have a sense of, does it refer to the chicken? Or does it refer to the road or to something else? And that's the, the major problem that the second, uh, let's say the, the second major component uh, of, of the transformer block addresses. If we present this example to, um, the small model to the distilled GPT-2, uh, and we say the chicken didn't cross the road because it was, it would complete it by saying covered in grass. So that's probably referring to the road. Um, you can run it multiple times and you will get different results at each time. And that's due to something called sampling that we'll, we'll, we'll discuss later in the video. Um, and then he thought the sun wasn't so bad, so apparently the chicken is is a uh, is a male in this in this scenario. And so that's these are the two major components of a transformer block. First, the the, the token or the word, the input word, goes through the self attention layer, and so that's the first component in the processing uh, steps. And that looks at the entire sequence and bakes in the understanding from previous words that are relevant to this current token, this current position. And then it produces its output to the uh, feed-forward neural network, uh, which continues the process and outputs, um, let's say, a, a prediction for uh, the layer. Those are the two major components of a transformer block, the self-attention layer and the feed-forward neural network layer. Let's continue talking a little bit more about language modeling and to see how the input is processed before we present it to the model and then the, the exact type of output that we get out, so out of the model 
and how we turn it into language. So how do we transition words into IDs and back? That's the first step and it's called tokenization. If we look at our example, the Shaoshang redemption, um, I actually oversimplified it. If we present it to uh, distilled GPT-2, uh, it would actually break it or tokenize it into four tokens. We kind of think about this as, as four components. And the first step after breaking it down is to convert each token to its ID. And this would be an integer representing uh, the index of that uh, token in, in the vocabulary of the model. And then that is presented to the model. The model also outputs an ID. And we use the tokenizer to translate that um, ID into a word, and in this case, redemption. I've created a small notebook, Jupyter Notebook, for you to, to try out and have some, some fun with. Uh, the link is in the description below. This is the, the, the link on the screen as well, bit.ly slash simple transformer. And what that will do is to first download a pre-trained uh, transformer model from Hugging Face. So there's a language that can generate and create, uh, let's say language, it can generate uh, words based on the training that is, it has seen. Now this is, a, is about 350 uh, megabytes, so be warned if you need to be concerned about that with your internet connection. Uh, but that's the first step is declaring the tokenizer, de declaring the model, uh, both are, are the distilled GPT-2 model from the Hugging Face team, which is a, a, a smaller version of a GPT model. Now, then what we'll do is we declare the, the text, the input text that we have, uh, the Shaoshank in this case. We tokenize that uh, data, we tokenize that string, and we present it to the model. We give it to the model's uh, generate function, and then it would store the output in, in the output variable, and then we present that output to the, the, the tokenizer, and the output, as we see right next to my face here, is the word redemption. So it was able to generate the actual word that we're, we were looking to, to, to present. One reason why this implementation detail is interesting is when you think about this quote from GPT-3. And so this is part of a, uh, a philosopher's series um, on, on GPT-3 where people were playing around with it and, and getting some uh, interesting philosophical um, outputs out of GPT-3. So uh, in this quote, GPT-3, the AI, the machine giant machine learning model says the following. To be clear, I am not a person. I am not self-aware. I am not conscious. I can't feel pain. I don't enjoy anything. I am a cold calculating machine designed to simulate human response and to predict the probability of certain outcomes. The only reason I'm responding is to defend my honor. And so there are two things that I'd love to comment on this. The first one is why I'm bringing it up is this is interesting if you look about at the, the technical details because GPT-3 really has never said those words. GPT-3 has never seen a single word in its life. This is actually what it outputted, a string of integers, each one representing a word. In its training, all that is seen is, is lists of numbers, strings like this. So it's never come across any words, um, and, but it's, it's able to create coherent language um, based on, on translating them from these integers into words. Uh, those, so that's the first interesting uh, point. But then also, um, as it goes for all GPT-3 output, um, I would really love to see the prompt, the input prompt, uh, before I'm able to really judge the output. Because it depends on how you prime that model, um, you can really judge if, if the output is, is, is impressive or not. So I, I take every GPT-3 result out there um, with a grain of salt until I see the, the prompt. So that's, that's a quick disclaimer. So we've seen how the first step is turning each word into an ID, into an integer uh, that identifies that token or that word. But then these numbers, the number 11 or 1000, do not really have meaning encoded into them. And that is the next step that the model goes through for it to really understand or capture some of the um, meaning behind the words and what they represent. And that's the next step that we'll be talking about now. So how can we breathe meaning into numbers? 
The way that's done is through the uh, embeddings uh, matrix. I talked about embeddings in a blog post called uh, the Illustrated Word to Vec. I think that's probably one of the places I'd, I'd refer you to to learn about embeddings. But basically, when we downloaded a pre-trained uh, GPT-2 model, it came with this list of... So uh, the model knows 50,000 words, 50,000 tokens. Um, that's its vocabulary. And for each one of these tokens, it has a vector representing that token. And that representation, that numeric representation, in this case of 768 um, numbers, uh, captures some of the ideas or the meanings behind each token. And that is what the model uses to really make sense of, of the text that we presented. And so part of the training is creating this, this embeddings um, matrix. And when you download a pre-trained model, this comes with it. You can look at it in the, in the notebook. Um, so it would be stored in, in model.transformer.wte. So that's the, the, uh, the embeddings matrix. And you can see that it's the dimensions of it is 50,000 by 768. We can look, if you're curious, like me, you want to look and actually feel these, these numbers. And so this is when we present the, the, we can turn the word the into a, its integer, a token ID, which is 464. And then we can use that to get the actual embedding. And then here you can start to see the list of numbers that represent uh, the word the in, in this matrix. Um, and so this is the vector representing the embedding of, of the word the. And you can you know, change the words or change the IDs to find, to look at, I guess, different um, embeddings of, of various words. Now let's go back to our model. We had our sentence. We broke it down into the four tokens or the tokenizer broke it down. It turned each token into its to token ID. We used the embedding layer to translate the token IDs into embeddings. So each word right now is represented not by one number, but by a vector of 768 numbers. That is what we feed the model. That is what the, 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 the transformer blocks actually work on, is these embedded um, vectors that, that, that capture these, these tokens. The transformer works in parallel. So in this case, since we have all, all of the uh, inputs present at this time, it will process all of them at the same time. Each token is processed on its own track. The transformer would output um, a, a vector uh, based on its on its processing. And that is handed to the next block. And so we thought about an example of one block. Uh, usually you add more blocks, you get more representational capacity for the model. So the model is able to do more interesting things, uh, to, to, to think about higher level concepts, let's say, or, or capture relationships in the data that is not able to do you just using one, uh, one block. And so a, a block uh, outputs its output, which is then fed into the next block, which does some more um, processing on, on, on each of them, and it outputs it um, until it becomes the output of the model. Now, these uh, are called uh, hidden states. So these are referred to these vectors um, of the models processing inside of the model are called hidden states. When we're talking about um, language models, the one hidden state that we're focused on the most when we process the first uh, step of our inputs is the last one. Because we will turn that one, that hidden state is the one we will turn into uh, the next word. That we'll use that to predict the next word that comes after the Shaushank. If you followed me up until now, you've done really good. We're very close to the end. So we turned the text into token IDs, into embeddings, we passed it through the various layers. Now, how can we turn a vector, a series of numbers, back into a word? So how do we turn computation back into language, which we call you know, projecting the output? So what we do is we multiply the hidden state by a, a matrix. Uh, we pass it through a, a neural network layer uh, that creates a vector of 50,000 scores, 50,000 numbers. We can think of each one of these as corresponding to each word in our vocabulary. And so it is a score saying the word, let's say, redemption has this score, 14, let's say. 
Um, and if we're lucky, the best word that is that makes sense for this context would have the highest score. One way we process those scores um, that's common to machine learning is called softmax. So we pass these scores into a softmax function, and that makes it clearer for us, cleaner for us, to treat them as probabilities. And so the scores, um, which which are called technically called the logits. Um, you know, they can be negative, they can be, let's say, a thousand or minus two or 14. Um, once we pass it through softmax, they all become positive and they all add up to one. If you add up all of them, they all add up to one. So we can think about them as probabilities. And so that would be the output of the model. It would give us the, the probabilities of, of the various words. We can pick the first one, the first highest scoring one, or we can have other strategies for how to sample the output token. So in this case, let's say we chose the highest one, which is redemption here, and we output that to the model. Now, a final note is a little experiment that I've been working on. Um, this is not in the notebook that I'm sharing, but I am hoping to, to, to release this in the future. So here I have some code. This is my own sort of library that builds on, on, on Hugging Face that says, OK, let's uh, use the Shaoshank. Let's generate one more token. And the model is now is running, and it's trying to predict the next word that comes after Shaoshank. And then here's the, the output. So we have the input is token number 0 is the. And then we have three tokens, 1, 2, 3 are the Shaoshank. And then the output is redemption. So the model did well, and it, it was able to generate the uh, the correct word. Let's look at the probabilities, because remember I told you that we have assigned a score and a probability score to every word. What we have here is the top five scoring tokens for, for that, that position. And so we can see that at the end of the, of the model, when we projected it, the model thinks that the word redemption um, has the probability of 75% of being the next word to be predicted after the Shaoshang. But it's not the only predicted word. There are others that have lower probabilities. Um, EN has 3.6. Uh, then cl closing parenthesis can be uh, 2%, uh, 1.5 for ER, and so on and so forth. And you can see it has 50,000 of those. I'm just showing you the top 50, the top five. We can look at the top 50 if you'd like. Um, this is um, how it would look like. And so redemption is the first, again, with 75%. And then you have center, moment, center with a British spelling, um, man, photo, um, and, and so on and so forth. And so each word really is, is and you can look, if you want to look at the 50,000 tokens, you can, you can look at it. But that's one way to envision. And then we talked a little bit about sampling. So you can always pick the highest scoring one. This is called greedy sampling or greedy decoding. Just always pick the, the, the top one. And if you've seen your your keyboard on your smartphone when you choose the highest um, scoring uh, suggestion at every time. Sometimes you go into loops and the model starts repeating itself. And so in real life, really what usually happens is that we select or we sample from the top, let's say, five or top 50 tokens based on their scores. Um, and so if we turn sampling to um, true, we might end up with more interesting results and it wouldn't just always spit out redemption. That concludes this video. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the overview on the Transformers. I invite you again to uh, visit the blog and check out the Illustrated Transformer. There's a little bit more detail over there. One thing to notice is that here in this video, I'm using uh, the convention, I guess, of, of the model, the inputs going into the model from the top and the outputs coming from the bottom. Uh, it's reversed in the, the blog post. I'm I have a strong opinion right now that that's the way we should actually be presenting it, is that the output, the inputs coming from the top and the outputs come. It's more easier to read for, for people going uh, through a web page or through, through a paper. Um, but, you know, sometimes you see this convention of uh, from, from bottom to the top. So don't be confused by where the input and output is going uh, from. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any feedback. Uh, feel free to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, um, and thank you for watching.